Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I will be going over my top 10 favorite Tombow dual brush pen colors and I will also be going over some color palettes and theme ideas. All of the colors are here so you can just read it off if you're only interested in the colors, but I have a very particular reason for choosing each of these colors. Um, so if you're interested in hearing about why every single one of them deserves a place in my top 10 list, then definitely keep watching. This is just my Hobonichi Cousin planner and there's this like random empty page, so I'm gonna just swatch it here. The first color is 772 and it is a beautiful pink. Outside of mediums such as oil paints and watercolors, I strongly prefer to replace a color red with a pink. Um, oftentimes pink can just take place of red and it's a lot more flexible. I really adore this pink because uh, it is a mid-tone pink, so it's not too light, it's not too dark, and it's also a step muted, so it works really well, especially with drawing natural things, so perhaps blush marks on someone's face or um, drawing florals. It's also light enough so you can use it to uh, glaze over other colors and create new shades. So this one is a staple in my collection and I use it a lot in my videos. The next color is 912. So this color is more of a tan color, but if you layer it and if you contrast it well enough, it looks like an orange and it can also act as a brown. So it's incredibly versatile just depending on how you choose to use it. This next one is 991. So for the previous two colors, and you'll notice that for the rest of my color palette, they're mostly mid-tones with some darker tones. Uh, this is one of my only lighter tones, and I think it's good to have uh, colors of different brilliances in your color palette, uh, just to add some depth and variety. This is a really nice buttery yellow, which I think is a lot better than a pure yellow if you have a limited palette. Again, if you contrast it well enough, uh, you can achieve the similar effect of a bright yellow, but it also goes well with a lot more color palettes than a pure yellow. Next up is 126. So this is a beautiful yellow green and this one is actually pretty new to my collection and I quickly fell in love with it. I mean, as expected of green, it works really well to draw things like leaves and grass and trees um, and it just adds a really nice pop of color to your spreads. And this is one of my most saturated colors in this color palette. Um, again, I like to vary the different brilliances but also the saturation levels as well. Then I have 312. So 312 is also in the green family, and you might be a little bit confused why, you know, I for the other colors, I kind of go for versatile ones, but then for green, I choose to have two in my collection. And one reason uh, comes down to personal preference. I draw a lot of like florals and nature, so I like to have different shades of green. But for example, if you like to draw people, then you might want to add some browns to your color palette. But yeah, anyways, I like having a yellow green and a more blue leaning green because it vastly affects the effect of the color palette. So for example, you can draw a little flower with this pink and depending on whether you use this yellow green um, 126 to draw the leaves or 312 to draw the leaves, um, the former will be kind of like a springtime, summertime look and then the latter will be kind of like a wintry look. Next up, I have 526. This was also a recent addition to my collection. I'm not really sure why, but I am not the biggest fan of the blues that Tombow offers, um, but this is definitely probably that made no sense. I will just say probably this is my favorite blue because, um, well, I haven't tried every marker of Tombow yet, so this is best described as a, I would say, muted denim blue. As you can see, this is one of the darker colors and it works really well to add depth to your doodles, I guess. Then I have 553. So this is a really light color, which I would classify as under purple, but it's definitely blue leaning. It's very light and cool toned, so you can just add this sweet um, splatter of color in your spreads, and I am a big fan of this one. Uh, really good, again, to kind of glaze over certain colors and get different shading effects. Then I have 623. This is definitely a true purple. It's a lot more saturated and red leaning than 553. I'm also really picky about my purples because I 
I, I find a lot of purples to be just really ugly. Um, I don't exactly know why. So these two, one of them being more blue, one of them being more red, but they're both just very sweet lavender colors and I love it. I do apologize. I put um, N95 in the palette, but I actually meant to put in N65, so uh, ignore that. Although I will say, if you have the room to add another gray, N95 would be my top contender. This is N65. It is one of my oldest colors, evident by the ink that is starting to scratch off. N65 is a really good mid-tone gray, and you can see that if I build it up a few layers, it looks um, a little bit darker. The reason why I didn't include something like um, N95 in this color palette is because N95 is so light that if you, for, ex for example, letter in something, it's very hard to see and you will likely need to kind of outline it with a gel pen or something. Um, but N65 is really good as a standalone uh, color, or I guess shade, but it's not so dark that it overpowers anything else. And then last but not least, I have N45. So N45 is a step or two darker than N65, and for your taste, it might be a little bit too close in shade uh, for it to both be included in my choice of color palette, but I honestly cannot live without either of them. N45 is just dark enough so that it's not mistaken with black, but it is very much obviously darker than all of the other colors in my um, color palette. Whereas N65, I would say it's of the same brilliance of several other colors in this uh, palette, so it doesn't differentiate itself well enough. So yeah, I, I prefer to have both. So those are my top 10 favorite. Let me just double check. I actually did 10. Five, five. Okay, yes. And you probably already picked it up. This column is like a one swipe thing. And then this column I did three swipes so you can see kind of how the color builds. So now what I'm going to do is show you what themes and color palettes you can create with just these 10 colors. The most obvious one is staring at us right in the face. It is a rainbow color theme. Color theme? It is a rainbow theme with rainbow colors. And an example of that would be see. This is a rainbow week that I did last week. Um, I used some other colors that aren't in this palette just because I have them. Um, it's a lot brighter, but it's the same idea. You have a pink, you have an orangey color, you have a yellow. You can choose either the cooler green or the yellow green. This green is the one that I use here. You can choose a blue and then um, either the cool tone purple or the reddish purple. Um, and then perhaps one gray. And there you have it, a rainbow week. Apart from doing a pure rainbow, you can also assign a fruit to each of the colors. I know this sounds really strange, but for example, pink can be strawberry, um, orange can be orange, yellow can be lemon. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. So for example, I draw kind of like a circular or a spherical triangle. That's the strawberry. You can do an orange. It looks really ugly now, but you'll see what I'm doing later. This is um, a lemon. And then I'm just taking my gel pen and I'm going to add the details. And this is where um, the doodle is going to kind of come to life. I'm doing this unplanned, so it's not as uh, nice as I would like it to be, but you get the idea. So that's a funky looking strawberry. So yeah, you can see I just very quickly created this little theme that you can use throughout your days. Um, you can argue that these doodles are really ugly and I would agree with you, but for example, I'm someone who actually really does not like to spend too much time in my planner just because I'm so busy. That sounded really pretentious. I, I didn't mean it that way, but I, I truly am like really busy and I don't have too much time to just pretty up every single page. So quick doodles like this, it gives the illusion that I have my life put together when I really don't. So yeah, and unintentionally this arrives at my next topic, which is uh, groupings of three. So I really like working with polytones of three or more. Um, I find three to be the optimal set. So the first three of the rainbow are pink, this tannish orange, and yellow. 
whoops, yellow, um, and I already used it here just unintentionally, and you can see just how well these three colors work together. Some other ideas is kind of like a sunset color scheme. Um, this would be like the top of the sky, this would be like the center, and then this would be the sun itself. You can also draw really pretty florals with these. Okay, so these are the first three, and now I'm going to remove the blush color, and I'm going to introduce the fourth color after the yellow, which is this yellow-green. And again, look how perfect these colors work together. So this one, I would say, works well, A, either as a springtime uh, color palette, or B, as an autumn-time color palette. So one idea that you can do is like a citrus color scheme. You know what? Let me write this down. So the first idea is a citrus color scheme. So I kind of already did it here. We have an orange, we can do a lemon, and then a lime. And that's perfect for springtime or summertime even. And then the other idea is an autumn theme. So tan, yellow, and green are, you know, leaf colors in the transition time of autumn. So this works really well to do that or I guess to achieve that look as well. So now we're going to remove this tan color and subsequent to this yellow green is this cool tone green. You can probably see a theme of what I'm doing um, and once again, this color palette works so well together. Let me show you. So we have yellow, yellow green. By the way, I'm kind of rushing through this because I haven't had lunch and I am very hungry. So yeah, this is a cool tone green, kind of like a sea foam color. And again, this works really well for spring and summer. So one idea is using the yellow as the center of daisies, which I don't know what that's called. I'm gonna search it up because it bothers me that I don't know what it is. Pistol. So Google says it's called pistol. Uh, but I'm not sure, so if any of you know, please feel free to enlighten me. Um, anyways, you can use this yellow to draw some blobs as the center of the daisy. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. Simply outline it and then draw little petals. Again, this is very rough. And then I'm just gonna use um, the two shades of green. The reason why this works so well with just yellow and green is because here, white acts as a um, quote-unquote color. That was so strange. Um, quote-unquote color. So yeah, it doesn't look too dimensional. Um, but if you want to just add some extra depth, you can use this cool toned uh, green as well. I think that looks really, really cute. Um, and you can probably predict what I'm going to do, I'm going to take away the yellow and subsequent to this quotoned green is this blue and right away you have a really nice green and blue color palette. This reminds me of um, Monsters University to be honest. Um, where can I do this? So I'll just do it here. I kind of messed up my lettering a little bit but this works really well for like landscape natural looking sceneries. Actually let me show you. I did a similar thing a while back. Where is it? Yes. So this is this yellow green. Um, this green is slightly different from this one, but it's similar. And then this blue is this one. I honestly am struggling coming up with a nice theme idea with these three, apart from like blueberries and Monsters University. Uh, so. My suggestion might be a little strange, but you can do kind of like a... Okay, first of all, the less strange option is to create a treescape. Is that even a thing? Treescape? Um, but you'll see what I mean. And then you can just outline... So very simply, I have some trees here. Um, something else that you can do, something else that you can do is fish. <laughs> I know, that sounds really strange, but um, I think this works really well um, as fish colors. I, I never imagined those uh, combinations of words. 
would ever come out of my mouth, but it's true. I actually don't really know how to draw fish, so I apologize if this is not what fish looks like. Um, you'll see a theme where I intentionally make things look really soppy and then I use my gel pen to uh, make things look better afterwards. Again, I don't really know what fish looks like, so I'm trying my best here. These fish look really deranged. <laughs> but I'm sure if you plan it better and sketch it out or something, it'll look a lot better, but you get the idea. Anyways, out of this color palette, this is probably my least favorite, so we're gonna move on. I'm gonna remove this yellow-green, and now we're gonna move into the cool-toned territory by adding this um, kind of light periwinkle. Love this so much. So immediately I think of a floral, so you can once again take this purple and draw some uh, suggestive shapes to look like petals. You can use this blue to draw the pistol um, and perhaps some little little florals here. And then you can use this cool green as the leaves. So if you compare like the daisy to this floral, um, this one obviously looks a lot more wintry than this one. So yeah, this is another really fun color palette to use for the winter. Also, I want to mention that you don't necessarily need to have theme ideas, like doodle ideas in mind. Um, a lot of the times I, I just use a certain color palette and I don't really doodle any- okay, this is a terrible example. But like here, I just used blue. I just used blue. I didn't really bother doodling anything, so sometimes just having a trio of colors to use a certain week is really nice and you don't have to create all of this fancy extra stuff. Alright, moving along, getting rid of this green and adding a purple and now we have a blue and purple color scheme. This is one of my favorites. Again, very cool toned so it looks perfect for winter. You can create a similar floral design with these three colors, with um, the two purples as the petals, and then the blue, the very dark blue, as the leaf. So, quick demo. So for these florals, I'm just gonna do like a swirl. And then you can use the dark blue To create uh, the leaf. You can even use the other petals colors to add some depth to the leaves as well. Again, I'm just thinking about lunch currently, so <laughs> this is getting messier and messier because I want to eat lunch. Okay, this looks a little rush and disproportional, but you get the idea. I think this creates a really nice theme for winter winter as well. I'm gonna get rid of the blue and add in a gray. Purples and grays are so pretty together. I'm gonna actually add the gray here because this one is a little bit more muted than that one. Um, you can also do a galaxy theme or like crystals and gems. So how would you do crystals? I, I will do one example here. Alright, so this is an example of a crystal theme that you can do. Um, just replicate it with the other purple and gray, and I think this looks wonderful. Typically, if I were to follow the pattern, I would remove this one and then add in this gray. But honestly, I think gray by itself should be a color scheme. Um, and when I use grays, I don't typically have a theme. 
So I went through all of the colors and showed you the different groupings that you can do um, to have really cohesive themes. Another thing is you can add gray to any of these color schemes and it would match perfectly well. Um, I also like to use this pink with gray. I think it creates a really soft look. And typically, um, my collection is bigger than these 10, so I would typically go for a lighter gray when I add pink so that it's softer, but this works as well. So this works really well as a soft floral. Um, I can show you what I mean. Again, this is very rushed. I'm literally like losing motor function. <laughs> okay, so you can just use a grays to draw in the leaves. For more precise uh, leaf drawings, you can use the bullet tip. I typically like to make smaller leaves with the darker one. And you can also draw leaves that aren't filled in um, to kind of add another dimension. Yellow and grays another excellent combo. You can achieve the same thing here. Um, you'll see a theme where, I mean, I guess orange looks fine with gray, but most colors, if you add grays, it looks beautiful together. Not so sure about this one. Might be a little too dark. Um, again, I like to mix colors that have uh, different brilliances, so I really struggled with this color palette because um, these two are mid-tone and this one is dark. There's nothing really that's light, so it's hard to um, create a nice look. So I think this video is probably around 20 minutes. I don't know. Uh, and again, I'm thinking about lunch, so I'm going to end it here. I am obsessed with color. I'm an artist. I can talk about color all day, but I think I will let you guys go for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week. Bye!